Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. Today is just a little bit of an update video on the JWN project. I don't know what video number this actually is, but it is what it is, and it is in pretty well in order from uh, all the edits that I can make. So, um, today is the 24th, January 24th, 2017, and heard a noise back there. I don't know what that was, but anyway, We've got the big coil here, we've got the magnet, we've got the rotor, or the commutator I mean. I've put brass brushes on here, I'll get you a close up of that in a second. Um, I'm running on 11 9 volt batteries, the battery voltage is 111.3. And then I've got a current meter up here, so that's those two. And then I've got the oscilloscope here, and I'm just going to show you really briefly some of the interesting results that I've been getting as far as the induction of the magnet and getting the thing to spin. Now, the voltage I'm running at is not enough to keep the thing moving, but that's okay because what I want to show you is how the induction voltage and current, according to how this is configured, if you have no idea, and I'm not going to get into this in this video, go watch the search for, answer, the search for answers, part 14. It'll explain to you how this is working. So don't ask me in this video. Go watch that one. It is a lengthy video. It's worth every minute in my opinion. So let's show you the voltage and current and the oscilloscope shots, but let me give you a description at least of how this is set up real quick. All right, as you can see here without getting too close, I have marked the magnet. I don't know if you can actually see that, but I've marked the magnet and I've marked the coil and I've done the um, tests to find out which way if the magnet passes north or south this direction or north or south this direction which way does it induce voltage into the coil okay and then i've configured the commutator to run where when i'm applying voltage into the coil the magnet let's say wants to align itself in this direction so what i've done is i've set up the commutator so that whenever the voltage is induced it also is the same direction that I'm applying, right, when the magnet spins this way. Now when it flips, it's actually the other way around, and the commutator also switches back and forth. So that is the, the current setup. And then let me get you a live view here. I'm not going to get too close because that camera does mess up things pretty good, or I mean that magnet. So you can see the brushes now are just brass because I was having some carbon problems, carbon buildup between things. So this got rid of that problem. So now I'll move on to the battery setup. So the batteries here are carbon zinc. There's 11 of them and they're brand new. So they're right at about 10 uh, point something volts, which gets us up to about um, 111.3 volts there. I've just used them very little bit here. And the current measurement is right across the negative side of the battery. Okay, now just something to note here um, these multimeters, they're Fluke 87s, and they read really, really fast. They're sort of as good as an oscilloscope as far as catching transients and things like that. So they're actually reading a true value and refreshing it about six times uh, per second on the screen. But the actual capture rate is ultra fast, which is what's kind of special about those meters. So it's almost as good as an oscilloscope. A scope. Um, it'll capture um, pretty good sharp transients and stuff like that. So that is the battery setup and the way these two meters are set up. Let's talk about the oscilloscope real quick. So the oscilloscope here, channel one, okay, is, is right here. It's on the 600 volt peak to peak scale and it is measuring the voltage across the battery. So one probe there and one probe here. The second channel is the current measurement of the battery lead. So this is the negative side of the battery lead going out to the um, two brushes on the commutator here. And then you've got the uh, purple or um, however you want a magenta. But that is going here. It is on the 6,000 volt peak to peak scale. And it is actually measuring what's on the brushes um, and or what you could consider across the coil, okay? So it's basically measuring right across the coil. And then the last probe, the green one here, which I need to reset apparently, is measuring the loop. So this is the loop of the coil, 
Okay, so from the brush, comes down, it goes through, goes back up, and it goes through the coil, comes back and goes to the other brush. So that is how that's configured. So now let's actually give this thing a little kick, and I'll show you what I want to show you. Okay, so the point of this test right now that I want to show you is that when the batteries are connected, and the commutator is spinning in this direction, um, it actually will keep itself going because the magnet is trying to align itself in the opposite direction. So I just kind of, I kind of want to show you that it's not, uh, it's not great. But every time the brush, okay, hits one of those points, okay, it drags it forward. There you can see it goes the wrong way. Okay, so the point of just showing you that was that the magnet is going in that direction when it's hooked up in this polarity. So here is what the meters look like. Okay, I'm gonna allow the commutator to just kind of spin itself. I'm barely pushing it. You can see it's really not, not much. It's draining the batteries just a little bit. It's pulling very little current, always in the positive direction. Yep, reset my meter there. So it's always in the correct direction. Now I'm going to just short the whole coil out. So it's pulling 2.4 milliamps and you can see how it dropped the battery voltage. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and look at our scope and see what the scope tells. So here's what it looks like on the oscilloscope. And I am just barely helping it. But you can see if you look what's going on there and I'll, I'll pause it here and give you a, an indication. So let's look real quick. Okay, we're going to um, zoom in on all this data. And you can see what's kind of going on here. So um, let's go over to this section because I think it will be easier for you to understand. I'm going to bring the blue to the front here. There we go. So you can see what's happening here. Um, let me get a full cycle in there for you. So this is the battery voltage. You can see it drops down, then it pops back up, and it drops down again. And then the purple trace, okay, is the voltage at the coil, right? So the voltage at the coil, it turns on right here voltage at the coil. As soon as it turns off, it rings really, really big. These are 50 volt per division. So I'm off the scale, completely off the scale. Um, you can see what the current looks like here. Um, these values down here are a little bit unuse, uh, not useful because of the ringing that's going on. And then you can see the green trace is, is the, uh, the loop, the coil itself and what it's producing. You can actually see it kind of goes down right here. Now, it rings until the coil shorts. Once the coil shorts, then it has a little bitty gap again and it rings again. Then the cycle starts over. Okay? So what's important here is the blue is always going in the, t in the positive direction and the green alternates. So here blue is positive, so is green. Then here uh, green is actually negative. Okay? But blue is always positive current, which means it's being consumed, which means it's consuming current, which our multimeter also, also agreed upon. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, so I just kind of wanted to show you what we got right there, and now we're going to zoom out. You can see where the, um, the cycle is opposite. So this is the voltage on the coil, and here it flips. Voltage on the coil, voltage on the coil, there are 10. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Individual uh, divisions on the one half the commutator, total 20. So we're getting exactly what you'd expect. The blue is using current. The green is current in the loop. Yellow is voltage, so every time it charges, it dips. It's hard to see from this far away, but every time that the voltage charges, bring the yellow to the front, you can see it. There you go. You can see the voltage dips every single time. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run the exact same test, except I'm going to push the commutator faster than it can run, and we're going to see what happens to our scope shots. So right now we're using power. Now I'm going to show you something completely opposite.
So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get this thing spinning like this. All right, at about that RPM. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this thing real fast like I showed you and watch what happens. Battery voltage is going up and the current meter is showing a negative sign. Hmm. That means current is going in the wrong direction. The faster I spin it, which I can't really go any faster than this, but basically it'll stay in the negative. Let's look at the scope, see what it tells. Okay, so now I'm going to run this thing by hand, um, push it a little faster like I showed you, than what it runs on its own. Here we go. Alright, I'm going to stop this thing so I don't waste any battery or anything. So let's analyze this signal. It looks like a mess. Um, one thing to note is that this wave in the current probe is actually magnetic interaction. I'll turn the green trace on. There it is. So that's actually the, uh, the magnetic interaction and it's a bit of a mess. So the current is all over the place on this uh, green trace. It's down and up then down and up then down and up. I'm going to turn it off just because it's so much mess. It's hard to see what's going on. But um, let's take a look here. I'm going to zoom in so we can see things. I'd like to bring, oh, turn the green one off. There we go. Off and bring the yellow one to the front. Okay, so what do we see here? Um, we see that our current battery voltage, which is a live voltage, is 109.4 volts on, on here, right? And you can see it's calculating the max voltage. And it's basically off the screen. It's above 116. So I'm zoomed in pretty close so I can see what the battery voltage looks like. And you can see there are these steps going up. Okay, and you can see there also the same thing on the current. So remember, anything in the positive direction, okay, which is like here. It's not very zeroed. But anything in the positive uh, direction, like this, is consumed power. And this is power being used right and you can see that the battery dips down so it actually is power being used and this is where well if we look let me bring the purple to the front uh, it's a bit hard to see but you can see here's one cycle and then it switches to the other polarity here okay you can see it up here really clearly how it's oscillating up down up down up down so that's the polarity change so what that means is right here where the yellow is the highest that is actually the magnet passing right down the center of the coil. And you can see when it's not inducing voltage, it's using power. When it's inducing voltage, it's actually feeding back power. You can see the current even tells the same story. Positive current, negative current. Okay. So the whole point of this test, right, was to show that you can actually use the induction to charge the batteries. And it truly is actually reading right. So that means my fluke meters are reading accurately. So there you go. And that's the result I wanted to show you. And a lot of this noise is due to the brushes. They're just really, like, they're just miss, miss and hitting all the time, which is actually something I would like. I want that. All right, so that's where we're at right now. I just wanted to show you that, why I got it in my head, explain to you what's going on a little bit. Now, if you have not watched the Search for Answers Part 14, it goes into what's really going on here and how that works and how that's possible. But basically, we're actually using um, all the effects of induction to aid in rotating the magnet and putting voltage and current into it by the rotating magnet. So literally, the voltage we're applying is making the magnet go by the coil. The magnet is inducing voltage and current in the correct direction, in the same direction, right? So we're adding to that voltage and current with magnetic flux. So you're using the magnet not only to just move 
right? You need the magnetic interference with a coil to make a motor, but we're actually using the magnetic flux in the magnet to aid in the magnet's movement. Now, granted, I am spinning it by hand. Um, I have spun this thing up to uh, about 600 RPM, and I believe we were well over 10,000 volts uh, induced voltage on an open coil. So, anyway, oh, we got a we got a visitor. Hi, Lily. You gonna come visit me? Are you gonna come visit me? <laughs> come and visit me, Lily. I don't know where the sun's at. It's too far away? Yeah. Okay, great. Anyway, God bless you guys. Thanks for watching. Read the Bible more. And if you want to know more about what I'm doing, you know, check out the live stream. Check out all the things I've been doing. Check out the, the search for answer videos and continue watching my channel. And I'll share everything I can with you. When I learn what I learn, I'll let you know how, how it goes. Hey, come here. Yeah, come here. I want to show you something cool. You ready? Come here, I gotta pick you up. Look, you see yourself? Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's it. I'll see you guys later. Bye, Lily. Bye, Lily. Bye. You gonna shut that for me? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's a lot of wire.